Hey philosophers, as you know, a major part of philosophy is evaluating arguments. And oftentimes, the structure of an argument, so how it's laid out, is more important than the conclusion of the argument. And you know, we evaluate arguments all the time in our daily lives. We say, oh, that's a good argument, uh, or you know, what kind of logic is that? That's a bad argument. These are the expressions that we use, but what are some ways that philosophers evaluate arguments? There are obviously many criteria, but today we're going to discuss two very fundamental concepts called validity and soundness. Okay, so now let's look at this argument. Premise one, I am either a cat or a human. Premise two, I am not a human. Conclusion, I am a cat. <laughs> okay, now let's just put it out there first. Philosophers would say that this is a valid argument. So in philosophy, a valid argument is where if the premises are true, then the conclusion is also necessarily true. In other words, the conclusion successfully follows from the premises. And note that, you know, the premises themselves don't have to be true. It just has to be that if the premises were true, the conclusion would also be true. So now, so now you get an idea of why the argument of, you know, I'm either a cat or a human, I'm not a human, therefore I'm a cat, is a valid one, right? Because if I'm either cat or human, say that's true. And if I'm not human and that's true, then necessarily I'm a cat. Okay, now let's look at this argument. Premise one, if a person is vegan, he or she does not drink milk. Premise two, Natalie Portman does not drink milk. Conclusion, Natalie Portman is a vegan. Okay, so for those of you who don't know Natalie Portman and her diet, um, so Natalie Portman is vegan. So all the statements in here are true. If a person is vegan, he or she does not drink milk, Natalie Portman doesn't drink milk, and also Natalie Portman is vegan. These are all true statements. But the question here is, is this then a valid argument? And the answer is no, it's not a valid argument. It just happens to be that the conclusion is true. But there are actually many, many reasons why one might not drink milk other than he or she being vegan. Like they could be lactose intolerant, right? So here the conclusion does not necessarily follow from the premises. And here you might ask, you know, how do you tell? I can't tell if the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. And that's a good question. It can be difficult to immediately tell if an argument is valid. So pro tip is to get out of the content of the argument and step back to look at the general uh, structure of the argument. Okay, so here the structure is if one is A, then one has property B, right? So A here being um, vegan and B being uh, doesn't drink milk. Premise two would then be X has property B. X being Natalie Portman and B being not drinking milk. And then the conclusion would be um, X is A. So Natalie Portman is vegan. This is the general uh, structure of the argument. Now, now, if this argument structure is valid, then no matter what you substitute the variables with, it, it should still be valid. Then, you know, we can say premise one, cats love tuna. This being, if one is a cat, one loves tuna. The so cats love tuna. Premise two, I love tuna. Conclusion, I'm a cat. <laughs> Again, the conclusion that I'm a cat. I must really want to be a cat. So here you can very easily see that the argument is invalid. Both premises are true, but the conclusion is not. I'm not a cat. 
So this is one way to see whether the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. Now we've confirmed that the argument um, of you know being vegan and Natalie Portman is an invalid one. So then, now that we've talked about validity, let's talk about soundness. There's not too much to talk about soundness because soundness is essentially when an argument is first valid and second has true premises. Oh, Julie, then does the conclusion also have to be true? Ah ha ha, trick question. Remember, a sound argument is also a valid argument. And in a valid argument, if the premises are true, conclusion also true. So soundness in an argument is obviously what we should all aim for in doing philosophy and in life. But philosophy is life. So I don't know if there's any difference. So great. Today we went over the concepts of validity and soundness. We looked at an example of an argument that is valid but not sound. Remember the uh, I'm either cat or human argument? Okay. And then we also saw the example um, where the premises and conclusion were all true, but the argument was invalid with Natalie Portman. So now when you read or hear arguments, you can evaluate them with these concepts in mind. You know, so when you think an argument is a bad argument, is it because the argument is invalid? Or is it because the premises are false? These are crucial questions that will help you think more precisely about other people's arguments or even your own. So go out and use these terms. But before you do that, don't forget, to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a philosophical week. Bye!